Hey everybody, how you doing today? I'm Jim from Outdoor Adventure Productions and the YouTube channel Carolina Outdoor Adventures TV. With me today, we got something totally different we're doing today, okay? We're up here at Little Ponderosa Worm Ranch. 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 This is a ranch, it's not a farm, okay? If you look behind me, you see all these little worms are going around, yeah, popping around. But what we're going to do today, guys, is that, you know what? A lot of you fishermen out there and outdoorsmen, you know, uh, a lot of you know that you've got artificial baits and you've got uh, live bait. And the thing is, hands down, there are times, most of the time, when live bait will outperform an artificial bait. And we're here, we're here today, and Jesse's going to talk to us about his worm farm. Behind me here uh, is the worm beds. We're going to go in there and take a look at them. And he's going to explain to you everything that goes into growing the worms and feeding them and things like that. So it's going to be a pretty interesting uh, little thing we got going on here. And I want to thank you, Jesse, for having us here today. And um, go ahead and, and tell the people a little bit about your venture and how you got it started, if you would. All right, so behind me we have cinder block raised beds, and the reason I've used cinder blocks is to keep predators out, rats, mice, moles, things of that nature. And if you come with me, I'm going to show you we have a cover on these okay. beds. So this cover here is a weed barrier. This right here is the weed barrier. And the weed barrier, all that does is it keeps the birds from eating the worms from the surface. When it gets hotter in the summer, I'm going to take off this weed barrier and we're going to install foam board up there in the corner of this yard here and we're going to put that on top of the beds and that's going to keep the, the heat of the sun from cooking these worms. Okay. And the worms are raised in nothing but horse manure compost that okay. I pick up at a local farm here up and, the mountain. And I guess that could probably be really bad for them if you had the heat of the manure plus the heat of the summer. Yes. Cooking them. So you put that foam insulation, that's really an insulation. Yes, we okay. don't want them cooking farther. The compost will heat up a little bit when we put it in, but the compost I'm picking up is maybe three months old. So it's gone past the initial heat phase, so the temperature is tolerable for the worms. Well, let's take a look in here, Jesse, and see what you got going on. We have red wiggler worms, which is a great fishing worm and a great worm for making some dirt. but. Dirt or manure? manure? Dirt and manure. I mean, this is what worms but like. this is food to the worms. But everywhere I turn my hand up, you see all those worms? So I got worms of all sizes in here. Babies, adults. So an adult worm is a worm that has what looks like a ring around his head. So that ring around his head means that it's ready to lay eggs and worms are hermaphrodites, so they're both male and female at the same time. So we can... Alright, and just come into... Now, here is a... Here is a juvenile red wiggler, and you can tell it's a juvenile because there's no ring around his head. So a red wiggler, after three months of age, will grow the ring around its head and it's ready to lay eggs. So what kind of uh, food, or I guess you'd call it food, or uh, what would you call it? The worms, uh, they eat their horse manure bedding, but to help the worms grow to a larger size, I also feed them alfalfa meal, which is a higher protein item, so it's a fattening agent because I sell a lot of these worms to bait shops. Okay, um, before uh, you have an integrate life, light system here, and you were telling me all about it, Jesse, but. Before we go there, what kind of worms do you raise here? I mean, at one time I know you had a couple of varieties, but uh, did you stop doing something or? Yes, uh, I raised Louisiana swamp worms and red wigglers, but the Louisiana swamp worms were slow breeders after a period of time, and I elected not to raise them anymore. Now okay. I'm just raising red wigglers. So a worm is just not a worm. There's, you just don't have a, a, a fishing one. You have a variety. There's of thousands of species of and worms. And they call them a red wiggler because I know when red wiggler, you know, a lot of them, they'll really hop and they'll squiggle around a lot, won't they? They're real, real active worms. Yes, they're very active on the hook and they live for a long period of okay. time under the water. They're not a large worm, but I've caught lots of big fish on them. I think the fish are keying in on the action and the scent of this particular bait. Gotcha. 
All right, now let's go ahead and talk about the uh, lighting system. Jesse, let's talk about the lighting system here. Now, uh, when we first got here, you, was, you know, I asked you why you have all these lights around this fence, and you explained to me that you even have them on your house here. And you explained to me that if you don't have lights out here, these little guys at night, they like to get out of here. Yes, uh, so a light that's around these beds will contain the worms. Uh, let's say there's a pressure change with a thunderstorm coming through, or the worms, for some reason, don't feel like they have enough feed, they will leave the beds. But if you have a light system in place, it will contain the worms in these beds. There's cracks in these cinder blocks that they can crawl out of, but these lights solve that problem by keeping the worms from going out of the blocks. Okay, so they will... There's nothing really to keep them in here except for the fact they have a nice, comfortable, warm bed with plenty of food. What actually keeps them in from escaping from the block. Yes, the light is basically, uh, it's almost like a barrier that they won't go past. Okay, all right, very good. And if you look across the fence here, I have more lights that are hung on carabiners. And that covers the outer perimeter of the farm. So what we have here is an LED light that, that is angled to point directly into the worm beds at night. It goes on automatically whenever the sun comes down, but um, this light near is extremely bright even though it's real small. But if you can get an LED light and install it, it's the best thing to use for a worm farm containment system. So we're in the inside part of my worm operation here, and I'm raising worms in horse troughs. And what I've done is I've elevated these troughs on bricks, cinder blocks. And um, I drilled holes on the bottom of the bed with a quarter inch drill bit to let the excess water drain off because you don't want your worms to be sitting in swampy conditions. It has to be damp, but you don't want it to ever become compacted and muddy or they'll become starved of oxygen and die. But in here, if you'll come over and look at the bedding, you'll see that these worms are eating nothing but horse manure. And this stuff here is flat, which means it's been partially digested by the worms. Okay. When I roll it over with the pitchfork, you should see, look, there's red worms right there. They're everywhere. See them? Mm-hmm. Look, there's a whole lot more. You see yep. them? They're everywhere. So, horse manure seems to grow a lot of worms very quickly. Look at them. Mm-hmm. See how active they are? Them are really active. And there's some... Uh, straw and hay from the horses but you see how they're bunched up like that right there see and those are nice fat ones but um i use this inside operation so i'm able to ship worms year round because in the winter time i cover my outside beds with a thick layer of straw to keep them from freezing all right there we have it folks uh worm farming from a to z basically um if you'd like to know how you can get your worms from Jesse, he sells them all over Tennessee, uh, a lot of uh, different uh, hardware stores, bait and tackle stores. And I do ship them all over the and country. And you do ship them. We'll put up Jesse's address here at the bottom of the screen. We'll put up his website address. And um, just get in touch with Jesse, and he'll tell you where you can get them if you're a local person and how to get them if you're not. So if you, uh, you know, folks, uh, uh, a worm's just not a worm. A lot goes into raising them, and uh, you've got good worms and bad worms, I guess, you know. that. Yes, there's a, a lot of commercial worm farms advertise red wigglers and send their customer a blue worms, which is not the item okay. the customer ordered. And blue worms are pretty much useless as a bait worm. They're very brittle, and they, they don't fall stay on, off the hook pretty they don't easily. Stay I've on had the hook. some of them. And 97% of vendors as of now are contaminated with blue worms and I work very hard when I establish my stock to make sure that it's only red worms. So give Jesse a call, check him out on his website, and uh, get you some of these red wigglers. Thanks for taking the time watching us, and we hope we uh, showed you a little something. If you have any questions about worm raising and worm, fight, worm farming, just uh, give Jesse a call or send him an email. Thank you everybody for taking the time and tuning in and watching us.